right, right. Today we're in Trimingham, and I, I hope you can hear me above the sound waves. But it's a mild, if not warm, day in July, and um, the sun is trying to get through, but it's also there's a tiny bit of light rain. But what I want to do today is do a little demonstration and talk about painting waves and just the waves. Um, or best if we're not flat onto the wave, we're just going to come slightly along the shore in a slight pan. Um, basically, I'm here with an easel working for plein air, and I'll be using oil and palette knives and things like that from more associated with the tool shop and painting. But what I want you to understand is we're going to use it as a big sculpt. We're going to really look and look and look at the colours. So I'll back up this video with some, video, um, with some photos, which hopefully will show the subtlety of the colours. And uh, perhaps for the sake of the painting, we'll beat the colours up a bit. But in the meantime, I'm just try and look and listen. As I said, on the intro, there should be a bit of the uh, sound of the waves. So this will be backed up with some still images. And I'll be doing some explanation to go through. But first of all, canvas or paper or something, I'm going to do this, or you can try it in acrylic. Um, and if you feel like it, you can also do other things like pastel if you haven't got this. I'm using a canvas which has been primed with a uh, very light acrylic um, colouring. I've gone for a slight purple, I suppose you could call it, but it's actually a mixture of a red and a blue. Uh, base, something to key on to. Um, then, when you set up, I've been the horizon. You always get it straight. That's the first thing. Measure it. You have to then put it across. And I've been the horizon slightly above centre, above halfway. And now what I'm going to do now, is I'm just going to sketch a bit of sea and get the perspective of those waves. Scrapers, and we have like a piece of wood or something. You load this up with as much paint as you can, and just go like this. Scratch it on. If it's oil, it'll hang around, so you've got plenty of time to work it. If it's acrylic, it'll dry fairly quickly, so you have to sort of you've probably got an hour's working. So this could be an hour's piece. For simplicity, I've just put some colours down. Now these are colours that you could try. I've got a, uh, a, a sort of light green or an emerald green, which is not really emerald, but anyway. Uh, a Krillian blue, a light blue. That's uh, a violet, crimson, and a ultramarine. Now there's a lot of blues going on there, and the greens just to give it the tinge, to give it that kind of, uh, sort of sea colour, I presume. Um, and I've got a white base, which is a griffin, a uh, quick drying white um, oil based paint and I find it just kind of brings things together and helps them dry slightly quicker which is quite useful so I'm now going to sort of push these around in this sort of process and mix them and get them on here again start building it up okay I'm just now mixing and laying on with a sort of this sort of palette knife working down from the horizon and later on I work up so you keep the horizon clear which is really important okay so at the moment I'm fixing the horizon line and going down okay and in general you can sort of keep going over the paint over the area we're not worried about any details we're going to get a basic colour now it's not the right colour because we're going to build up layers okay so you're not going to get the colour and leave it we're just going to put this first colour down now, tips. Oils just go everywhere and they're messy. Plenty of rags, 
and when you need to just keep things clean and if you get too much oil on there get some uh, kitchen paper and press on it and put it off and you get rid of some of the paint then layer, then layer again but I'll come back onto that the main thing is have lots of rags and keep your equipment and your hands clean because once you get once you get oil on it it just goes all over the place Having a pause from the time lapse. Now the main point is that I want, you want to try and fill the areas, especially the sky and the sea, as quickly as you can. Okay? So that's really what I wanted to say. So don't you know fill it, even if it's not the right colour, just get something in there. And then once it's completely filled then you can start going over. So not, what I don't want to do is like work on one area and just get it exact. Just you know, give yourself a few minutes to get as much colour as you can over the whole thing, excluding the kind of beachy colours, because I'll come back to those. So even where you can't see it, but over there you've got like the beach reflection, sky reflection, start putting those in as well. Okay, it's all rough, but it's just laying it on. It's just blocking in, getting it in, getting the colour on. One thing you often notice with the looking at the sea is right on the horizon, it's, the sea's darker, mainly because it's deeper and there's perhaps, I don't know, less reflection or whatever. So what I'm going to try and do now is put a dark line right across and then fade it in, okay, so it'll be very fine. So I'll just try and do a little where you can see it. that kind of thing. Okay, simple as that, but I'm going to go the whole way across and fade it in. And you're working both ways, okay? So now at the moment I've got most of the paint on the sky. It's not in the right position, but it's base colours. I've got most of the sea and the colours on, but again, not exactly how I want it. And now you're working between the two. Once you've got this horizon on, and then just keep feathering either way with whatever tool you have and eventually we'll start lighting and adding more light and then we start the next stage will be to add the beach colours and go the other way up and then do the junction of the water and the sea where the waves are. What we've got is a reflection over there where the swash is on the beach. So what you do is you take colours from the sky and you put them on the beach. Okay? So you're working with them at the same time. So you put your sky colours and you're bringing them down into the water. Now sometimes you don't want to take the colour back so you clean it. But if you don't mind, I don't mind sometimes putting a bit of the colour back. Turquoisey just kind of blends the colours nicely. So again, we're just really we're sort of getting somewhere now, keeping that horizon as tight as we can, working both ways up and down. And occasionally, you can sort of stretch that way, and get a smooth bit of water. Very gently, don't cut the horizon. A bit of sand there. Look at that.
that thing, but a slightly big wave. But in the, so you can see the waves coming in and just start to break. Uh, that's a feeling of perspective down the beach. I'll show you photos later of the beach view. You don't see that now. Um, just kind of picking up the colours you've used. You kind of got those feelings of the waves as they go. And if you pick up the wrong colour, it doesn't really matter at this stage because it's, it's all it's kind of nice how it works, how the colours blend. Impressionistic, uh, not mixing the colours so much together, or mixing the colours more on the, on the paper. And when I'm, I think I'm sort of, I, I, I kind of feel it's quite a subtle day. There's not much, it's not like a sort of fierce storm. There was a bit of rain over there. It's brightening heat, you can just about to see, well, I can't, well, we can. Um, I feel I've got the reflections about right. So while I've got the, this palette up, I'm just going to put a bit of blue, uh, sorry, white in the breakers and then I'm going to work the beach colour from the, from the bottom upwards and then finally, but keeping, trying not to, you've got to be careful you don't overmix the, um, the yellowy sort of beachy colours with blues and greens because you end up with a hell of a sort of murky brown green effect which you don't really want. Um, and that's why I've kept this area clean so I can work up and just blend slightly in the distance. So go back to time lapse. Uh, I'm just going to tie up the blue line in the horizon, work on these um, waves, and then start building in the sand. And then we'll probably talk to you again. Right, so basically we have a semi-abstract beach picture at the moment, looking at colours really more than anything else. A bit of composition uh, and the odd dead fly. A lot of sand, so it's quite grainy, but hopefully you won't have sand in your house. Um, now I'm going to do now work the sand colours. So I've got a, um, that's basically a, a brightish yellow or kind of a slightly Acadian sort of yellow. Um, that's a sort of buff tone, a bit like a, you could use a sort of um, a Naples yellow, a light blue and a crimson and white. Now, the, how you mix them is up to you, but you probably will use tiny amounts. I've only just put a big splurge to show you what I'm doing because the pigment will work working to them. You lose, use a lot of white. Um, if you need to darken it, you can add a bit of um, probably an ultramarine or something, but you've got to be very careful because if you start mixing the yellows and the blues, I mean, I'm using a tiny bit of blue, you start getting a very green beach. So let's just see how I go and I'll make some notes as I go along. Right, we're at the stage now where you're just doing things very gently and you're mixing. It's, 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 it's kind of intuition now. You've just got to kind of go with what you think. Right, just be light, don't overblend and just keep trying to get the perspective and working it across, okay? But it really is, you've, it's just trial and error now, and you might put one bit in, and then it goes wrong, so you have to sort of, you might have to scrape back. Uh, just be careful. You can see there, I've got the, um, I'm using the umber and a bit of the red where the water's 
it's or the sand's still wetter and where it's drier it's a bit lighter I'm trying to get that reflection so but it literally is now you just got to get into it and you're probably looking more at the picture now than you are the scene um, see it's, it's like when you first start a picture you're constantly looking at the um, scene and when you get to this stage you're sort of seeing how it, how it sort of looks on you know, your your picture you can see where the sort of slight blues are kind of coming through very gentle you know just to kind of get that kind of wet sort of beach effect so even there I'm just slightly overdoing it so I'm pulling it back there you go so I'm just going to carry on doing that now and and when we've more or less finished there'll be a few tiny touches and then we can um, talk about it and then go from there right now what I'm doing now is just putting in some very very light um, blue white sort of just in these sort of bits here just to sort of lighten and reflects the sky which is up here which you don't just see in the picture it just kind of helps us kind of maintain that feeling of kind of wet or where the sand is wet um, and that is more or less it so it's been about an hour and a half two hours uh, probably so slightly less in a studio and without recording stuff um, so I might just tiny bit, bit more. I'm just going to play around with it a tiny bit more, but I kind of think for the time being, for the purpose of the exercise, that's where we are. So I will email some more information um, as a backup to this, and hopefully uh, we can have a go at this and paint the beach, paint the waves. Thank you.